one of my friends from college reposted Franklin Graham's post about this prayer march, and Franklin Graham's post included all the people that were involved. Um, Dr. Alveda King, Dr. Martin Luther King's daughter, was leading it, I guess. So she's a bad shepherd. There's Tony Perkins, I don't know who he is, but I'm sure he's a pastor or something. And then there's Daryl Strawberry, who I think he got in trouble for cocaine once. I guess that changed his life. So Pastor Skip Heitzig, I guess he's a big deal. Um, he, he led it, and so did Bishop Harry R. Jackson Jr. But one of the most disturbing names on the list is Pastor Greg Laurie, who is uh, a super pastor and turns out he's a really bad shepherd. It's, it's crazy how I'm starting to realize that all the leaders in the Christian church seem to be bad shepherds. All right, so there's Pastor Robert Morris. I guess he's a big deal, whoever he is. Um, Pastor Paula White Kane. She used to be called Paula White. She's one of the most famous female pastors in the world, which is kind of a crazy concept because the Bible specifically says that women aren't allowed to speak in church. That's what Paul says. It says if you have a question, ask your husband after church. But um, I guess Paula White thinks that she's allowed to lead a church, which she does. She's a very famous pastor, and she's leading um, her church to go to Washington, D.C. to spread what's been happening in Florida over to Washington, D.C., I guess. I don't know. So there was also Pastor Gentezen Franklin, which I don't know who that is. There's Pastor Jack Graham, who's probably uh, Franklin Graham's brother. You never really know. They're all pastors there. So there's Michelle Bachman, who um, is a bad leader for her people, but she's been a bad leader for a long time. There's Pastor Andrew Brunson. This is this is a crazy list. Once you see it, it's like, wow, there are a lot of like very respected people who... Um, are leading their people into a dangerous situation. And it's not just leading their people, they're leading our country into a dangerous situation because it's a great way to spread germs. Uh, like congregating in Washington, D.C. is a great way to spread germs. All right, so who else is, is on this list? There's Jerry Prevo. I, I saw he had buses full of people going to this prayer march. Uh, I wonder if it was because Michael W. Smith's going to be there. Oh, my gosh, if Michael W. Smith's going to be there, then I got to go for sure. Oh, what if I miss him singing? He has that voice. It sounds so, like, average. And he did a cover of someone else's song, and that's how he became super famous. All right, so there's Dr. Kelvin Cochran. All the doctors are, like, anytime you're a doctor of religion, it's like, wow, are you a doctor of, like, teaching the Bible? Wow, you really have missed out on a lot if you're still... A Christian, no, no offense, but actually offense. Like you should have figured it out by now that the Bible is full of contradictions. All right, so the Navajo Nation Vice President Myron Lizer was there, and if y'all didn't know, the Nav Navajo Nation's been having a difficult time with COVID nineteen. So we're very grateful to bring as many Navajo Nation <laughs> people who have COVID nineteen to come hang out with Mike Pence. The um, task force leader for defeating COVID-19 and also all these other wonderful pastors. Um, but I guess Mike Pence isn't a pastor, but you know, you know what really disappointed me more than any name on the list is Oliver North. Cause I really actually like Oliver North and, um, he, he led a prayer during these, these are all the people that led prayers during the prayer walk. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. And then there's Lieutenant Colonel Edward Graham, which is, Oh, which is, um, Franklin Graham's son. So I guess he has a son that's a Lieutenant Colonel. Wow. That's a, that's old. Lieutenant Colonel's a big deal. All right, and then there's uh, his sister, Anne Graham Lotz, who's like a, a another, I think she's like a mega pastor, pastor. She writes books, which she's Billy Graham's daughter. And then there's Mike Pence and his wife. So let's all give a round of applause for everyone who tested the Lord thy God and made sure that they were really bad examples to their people and decided that they were going to be really bad shepherds. But I also want to give a round of applause to Joe Biden, who never once complained about the prayer march at all, because Joe Biden is a leader also, and he's afraid of the Christians. And that's why Joe Biden has billboards all over Pennsylvania saying like, oh, Christians for Joe Biden. And it's like, all right, dude, um, maybe you should lead the Christians, which if, I, if you want to lead the Christians, you need to tell them, hey, guys, uh, I understand that some of these mass regu regulations are over the top, 
but um, we still, as a country, need to fight together to beat COVID-19. And if we're all congregating in Washington, D.C. to spread the germs together, then that puts a lot of people at risk. But who knows? I mean, as long as Franklin Graham says it's okay, because he, he's, he's everyone's hero, but apparently there are a lot of people on this list that um, are guilty, including Greg Laurie and Paula White. It's like a freaking joke. This list is a joke because like it's like you got Paula White, you got Franklin Graham, and apparently this guy Robert M Morris, who I don't even know who he is, but he's a big deal. But I mean, you 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 got Greg Laurie in on this, and they all agreed. It's like unfreaking believable, unbelievable what the Christian leaders are like right now. The Protestants are just as bad as the Catholics. Not really. The Catholics are freaking nuts. They're like crazy superstitious, but. Welcome to the Supreme Court, apparently. 